What's up, y'all? It is Sheena, a.k.a. Sheena Panur, your favorite veteran. And today I want to talk about why you are not winning contracts. This is going to be a doozy. It may be some feelings are in this one, but I want to be real because that's all I know how to be. And we'll talk about it after the intro. Hey, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Here on the Sheena Panur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content, and other business tips. Okay, why are you not winning government contracts? That is like the question of the year for me. I have been on many contracts that I did not win either, but the point is for you to make sure you do a self-evaluation of whether it's you, it's you and your team, you and whoever you're working with to see why you are not winning. This is what I find. I find that people bid on contracts, they don't win and they never bid again. Or they bid on a few and then they don't win anything and then they come to me and say, I already know how to do everything. Shana, I don't want to take your course. I don't want to pay for a consultation. I'm going to DM you and I'm going to say, why am I not winning contracts? I've been on a whole bunch and I'm not winning. I mean, you're telling me that you want to, you don't want to pay for mentorship. You don't want to pay for help. You don't want to pay for strategy. You don't want to pay for from this, this, and this from someone who has built their business from absolute scratch to seven figure business in a relatively short period of time, not even trying that hard, but you don't want to pay to figure out what the heck you're doing wrong. I mean, I'm not saying pay me. You can go to, you can go for free. You don't even, people don't even want to do that. They don't even want to go to the SBDC. They don't want to go to the SBA. They don't want to go to their local PTAC and learn how they can get government contracts better, like how they can bid better, how they can build up their network better, how they can do forecasting. They don't want to learn about all that, but then you come to someone like me and say, I already know how to do everything but I'm not winning contracts. You're not winning because you're not figuring out what you're doing wrong in your bidding process. You're not asking for a debrief, okay? And a debrief is where you go to whatever agency you bid on a contract with after you don't win, okay? Sometimes they'll send you the bid tabulation where it shows the pricing. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll tell you exactly why you didn't win. Sometimes they don't. But then in, even in that, you should always ask for a debrief because if it's obvious that the price was the reason, then you know what that is. But sometimes they just say, thank you for your bid. You did not, you were not selected. And you're like, why was I not selected? But you're asking that to yourself. You're asking that to the wrong person. You need to ask that to the agency that you submitted the proposal to or the bid or the RFQ request for quote. You need to reach out to them and ask for a debrief every single time. Also, you could do an open records request where you're trying to figure out how did this other person that won this previous contract, how did they win? What did they write? Did they do something special? You're not winning because you don't care. You can't possibly care of building up your business if you're not trying to figure out what you're doing wrong. And you can't just reach out to us that are out here in the government contracting world. There's, there's a few of us out here and some people don't answer you ever. I always answer my DMs because I'm that's just how I am. But I really, really get in my feels and I really get an attitude when people are telling me, I ain't gonna pay for nothing, but can you answer this for me? And I'm like, well, hey, I don't mind answering some questions in my DMs. I do that all the time. But then I give you the free resources because you don't wanna pay and you don't even do that. Like, what y'all doing? Like, what are y'all doing? I, I don't... I, I don't know what y'all doing out here. Like, don't do government contracting. Like, I don't think that some of y'all, is you're not built for it because when it comes to not responding or, or having, you know, treating people a certain way when you're reaching out to them for help, it's gonna be doubly worse when you have an agency on your back, like saying, I need you to answer this, 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 and this, and you haven't even, you don't even answer emails. You don't answer phone calls, you don't answer emails, you don't answer nothing, but then you expect this agency to want to do business with you. Like that's not the way that this thing works. Maybe in the industry that you came from, perhaps, maybe those who are subcontractors now, you've been protected by the cloak of prime contractors, so you never had to experience the agency like on your back every single day or every other day asking for specific things and you gotta be on it and you're like, how am I supposed to keep up? Maybe government contracting is not for you. It's, it can't be because you have to make sure that you are building your business and treating it like a business and not treating it like a side hustle. This is not come as you please. This is more of you have to make sure you know what the heck you are doing. Also, 
If you're doing federal contracting and you're having any issues, this is a small government contracting world. Believe me, if they if there's an agency that has a problem with you and you go after something and they have a bad, say you want a contract and you've had a bad experience, though they've had a bad experience with you and you know, you pretty much know if, if the relationship is working or it's not working. They will just tell. I mean, especially if you're bidding on contracts within your local area, um, whether it's a local area or the federal space in your local area, they talk. These contracting officers, they go to conferences, they do this, this, and this, and they'll say, well, who did your who did your, your janitorial contract for your facility at blah, blah, blah? And they're like, girl, it was Acme, such and such and such, and they were awful. And they're going to say, which one is that? Let me make sure I write that down so I'll make sure I never do work with them. Like, literally, this is a people business. This is not, it's black and white, but it's a people business. You will get told on. Like, there are some people that slip through the cracks where they're, like, able to get multiple contracts and they have to figure out, like, why this person is not, you know, not going to be debarred or whatever the case may be. But just believe, trust and believe that there are agencies out here who are going to tell on you because you're not fulfilling the need the way they want you to do it. Now, don't get bullied. Don't get, don't get abused when it comes to the agencies because they can do that too. But I'm just letting you know that people will talk especially at these different conferences and these different events and you know you never know one agent one agent worker might go from one agency to another and you are bidding on something in that other location unbeknownst to you you made an enemy over here and that person comes over here because usually when people are in government they pretty much just cycle around they either stay there forever or they cycle around to another government agency that could literally be the reason why you're not winning contracts is because your name has been dragged through the mud and you don't even know as soon as they see your name come through they're like oh mm -mm, nope i don't want to do business with them they don't give you this bogus excuse as to why you have not won and that's really at the local level but at the federal level you could protest but just know also that protesting costs money you can't just protest and be like, I'm going to do a protest. And then you don't have the money. You have no money. So how are you going to protest something and you don't even have the grounds to stand on? I mean, it, it really just depends on where you're at in your business life uh, as to how much noise you can really make in your contracting experience. So you're not winning contracts because one, you don't care. Like honestly, you don't care, you can't possibly care or you would try to figure out every way to make yourself and your business better and you'll stop making freaking excuses. You have not had a good experience with an agency or they have not had a good experience with you and you've been dragged through the mud and you don't even know that you're being dragged through the mud. Another thing is you don't want mentorship. Like I'm one of those people who I'm like, ah, do I really need a mentor? And I feel like you do need a mentor to, to a certain extent. Don't say I need a mentor in order to progress forward. I would say don't do that. Don't have that be the hindrance to you moving to the next level. But if you have someone who's right in front of you who has done what you're trying to do why wouldn't you request for them to assist you now they may you may have to pay you have to pay to play what's wrong with that we pay for everything like when you go to get some Jordans when you go to get your uh, your Birkin bag when you go to get your Louis bag when you go to get food you don't haggle those people for the money that you're paying you pay because if you don't pay, you don't get. So it's the same exact thing. I don't understand where this ideal of just thinking that content, especially those who are creating content, government contractors or business people who, especially if they create content, why do you feel that they have time to just answer 50 million questions a day for you? Because what? I'm just really trying to figure out why that has become a thing recently. And the only thing I could come up with is some people are like, well, I just want to make sure you're legit. You know, you can Google me. I mean, to be honest, just to be real, Sheena Parker, Sheena Preneur, Foresight Industries. You can Google me and be like, nah, Sheena doesn't have enough out there for me to want to do. And you could do that before you even reach out to me. That's fact. I mean, I there's people out here who might be scamming. Totally get that. But if you come to someone and you're like, I've been following you for like two years. I've been watching everything that you say. Um, but I don't want to pay, so can you help me figure out how to bid? Now, if you really break down that question, help you bid on what? Like, if you know that the bidding process is a long process, there's a lot of paperwork, 
I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is that you all feel that someone has time to do and the only thing that content creators especially those on YouTube Instagram we're really trying to help you like it takes a lot to put out these videos it takes a long time it takes a lot of work and if you have an editor or anything it takes a lot of money to put this stuff out to get very little return and this is just me on my soapbox because I'm this is what I'm about to do but if you're trying to get into government contracting or trying to further or scale you need to be a student of the game you have to learn from somebody whether it's for free with the resources that I named, SBDC, SBA, PTAC, um, YouTube University, Google, whatever, go that route. That's the free route. That's how I got to government contracting is through the free 99 route. And I just, as I went and started learning about the different contracts that I was doing, then I was able to like consult with an attorney. I was able to hire different people in my in my personal organization and all these things and then I built from there. Now if you have a mentor, I would assume that that's probably a better route so you, you can avoid some pitfalls. Like a couple of my students, they talk to me regularly and I love it because it helps me flex my muscle of, of explaining things. So I had a student recently who was like, I'm, I'm bidding on this contract for litter pickup and I want to pay them per hour because I'm charging the agency per hour. And I'm like, well, it might be best instead of the employee running the clock on you for you to pay them per day or per event or whatever the case may be. So when they, they'll be cleaning up fast, like they'll, it's more advantageous for them to do a good job rather than just running the clock and then maybe not necessarily do a good job. And even though you're paying that person per day, you can still charge the agency per hour. You know, you just break it down like that. You know what your overall budget's gonna be. And she's like, oh my goodness, I didn't even think of that. And I'm like, this comes with experience, baby. Like this comes with me actually having to do these things. So having a mentor who has actually been in the field doing these things, does this every day. We still bid on contracts every week. We have another contract we have to submit. So having someone that you can bounce ideas off of or ask questions, I think is very important. So you're not winning because you ain't, you ain't asking the right things to the right people for the right price. If I helped every single person that reached out to me, I wouldn't even have time to run my business, let alone run Sheena Panua or create any content or anything. So you have to be clear. You have to be understanding of what you're asking for because you're asking for a lot when you want someone to do something that you haven't even taken time to do. Why you're not winning? Because you don't know what you're doing in your industry. You don't know the industry, so you don't know what to charge. That's one of the questions that I had. I'm like, mm, I don't really know the pricing when it comes to this thing. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to figure this thing out. Like, I cannot tell people I do facility management, I do janitorial, I do flooring, I do painting, and I don't even know what my prices are. That makes no sense. You're going into an industry, right, that you don't understand, and you don't know how to price, so why are you going into the industry? That's just a real question. That's why you're not winning, because you don't even know what to say, and the agency is gonna pick that thing apart. The contracting officer may not know, but those, the facility manager, I'm always gonna use facilities because that's what I'm in, but facility manager is gonna know when you're writing your proposal that you don't know what you're talking about, for the most part, unless you hire someone to do it. But if you hire someone to do it and you win and you know nothing about what you're doing, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Hopefully not, but you're gonna be in a world of hurt because you don't even know what these gaps are. When they go do a meeting with you and you're like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's gonna be a super, super red flag, like red flags everywhere. So be clear, you're not winning because you're not doing your proposals correctly. You're not. You don't know what to say, you don't know what to do. It doesn't always boil down to price, but they're gonna see like, they didn't even put in the basic requirements that we're asking them to do. So there's no way that you're gonna win. Okay, and this is my final, final reason why you're not winning contracts. You're too damn scared. Yeah, I said it, I said it. You're scared and you're scared of nothing. You're scared of documents. Now, most of you have gone through some stuff in your life that you're like, man, I am strong. I'm the strongest person I know but you're afraid of literal documents that could take you to a whole new stratosphere of life. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be afraid or nervous. I'm still kind of nervous when I bid on contracts or my team submits for a contract, but then I move on to the next one if we don't win. And if we win, it's like, ah, you know, turn up. But 
you're afraid. That's why you're not winning. You're not even ready and willing to submit the documents. You're not even ready and willing to take advice from people. You're not ready and willing to build your business or set up your business or even register your business. So you may not be ready for government contracting if you're not even ready to do some of the basic things. And this is just Sheena being Sheena. So it's no shade or disrespect to anybody. But just know that when you, you know, you're not taking the shot, you'll never get the shot if you never take the shot. Things are not just always gonna come to you, you know, on a silver platter. Especially, like I say, with those who feel like they, I'm so strong, I've been through this, this, and this, then why you not bidding on contracts? That's just the question I'm gonna ask. And I, I want people to know that this is something that they can do. I'm coming from absolute nothing. Like, not just in my business, but nothing as far as my life goes. Yeah, I did 20 years in the army, but I was almost 20 when I joined. So I had, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna go to the military when I graduate high school or whatever. No, my life was way, way different, totally different growing up. And so I'm coming from absolute ground zero nothing. And so you guys need to go out here and realize that this is something that you can do. This is not the hardest thing you've ever done, I promise you. It is something that takes some getting used to, some understanding, just like anything else that you've ever learned in your life. So I'm off my soapbox because I was like, y'all are killing me with this fear that you have. And my mother always said that fear stands for F everything and run. And that's what you guys are doing. You're running from the bids, you're running from the opportunities, you're running from the conversation, you're running from this, but then you're running to things that don't make sense like, hey, I don't wanna pay, they lead you, y'all leading with this in my DMs. Hey, I don't wanna pay anybody, but can you help me with this bid? That doesn't even compute. Like, if you want the free, I'm giving you the free resources and y'all think I have an attitude. And I'm like, well, then it is what it is. But hey, just wanna make sure that you guys know you can do this and this is why you're not winning. These are just a few examples that I wanted to give. And uh, make sure you join our GovCon community, our GovCon Moneymaker community, and it's 100% free to sign up. And check out my course, GovCon Now. The 2.0 is gonna be released here shortly, hopefully by the end of the month, that's next week, so we'll see. It's gonna be soon though. But until then, make sure you share all of your uh, experiences, whether I helped you, whether someone else helped you in government contracting or in business, share your struggles underneath. You never know who you could help, you never know uh, who could help you. So until next time, it's your favorite veteran.